What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another awesome DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Today I'll be showing you guys how to make modern title animations and how you can save them so that you can reuse them in the future. I will be using several easy techniques that make your titles render faster and easier to reuse in the future. And if you want a bunch of highly customizable and responsive modern titles, check out the new pack from BR Media Pro. These titles are super easy to use and save you a ton of time. Now, let's do this. So first inside of DaVinci Resolve, we'll open up a brand new project. And now we want to add in a fusion composition. And that's where we can make the title. So head over to the effects library and add in a fusion composition. I have it as a favorite, but you can find it in the effects panel right here. So drag that onto your timeline and then head over to the fusion page. Now, first thing that we want to do is add our text. In this effect, we're going to have three text nodes. We'll have a top text, a middle text, and then a bottom text. So we want to add the middle text first. Let's add in a text node and then connect it up into the media out. Now inside the text box, we can put in our text. So I'm going to do text. And now I'll set the font to be open sans and then extra bold. And I'll bring the size up a little bit as well. Now I want to make it so the text has a little bit of a slant to it. And how you do that is you need to go over to the transform tab. And then you need to set the transform from characters to words. If we leave it at characters, when we adjust the rotation, it'll adjust the rotation per character. But instead of to words, it'll rotate the entire word. And if you're going to have a couple of words in one line, just set it to lines and then that will do the same thing. So I'm going to set the rotation angle to be about six degrees. Then I can come down to the shear and then I can add a little bit of shear on the X value. And pretty much what I want to do is level out the text here. Now I want to add in a little box behind the text. And instead of adding in just a rectangle and making it so you have to readjust the size anytime you change the text, we're going to head over to the shading tab, go to select element, change it to number two, and then enable that. And by default, you'll be able to see a red border around the text. We want to change the appearance uh, from text outline to be border fill. And once we've done that, you can already see the effect has kind of been created. We want to extend the horizontal quite a bit and we maybe want to extend the vertical a little bit as well. Now we can set the color to whatever we want. I'm just going to leave it at red for now. And while we're at this spot, I'm going to change the color of the text just so it matches the colors on my website. All right, now that we have that, let's label this text node. So after clicking on the text node, hit F2 on your keyboard. Now we can call this text underscore M, so text middle. Now let's add in our next two text nodes. I'm going to drag down a text node and rename this to be text underscore T for top. And now I can merge this up on top. I'm going to put in your as the text and change it to extra bold as well and bring the size up. Let's head back to the transform tab, set the transform to be lines come down to the rotation, and now we can put in a six degree rotation. Now, to make this easier to customize in the future, what we can do is add an expression onto this value. And what we'll do is we'll type text underscore M, because we want to reference that node, and then do dot, and then just hit the plus sign here. And it'll add the name of this control. So now if we change anything in the text middle node, it will also change in the text top node. I'm going to do the same thing for the X value on the shear. All right, now that we've done that, I'm going to go into the text and the center X and Y, and then bring it up and just set it above the box, right like that. Now I can copy this and paste it, rename this to text underscore B for bottom, and now I can take the layout and then just move it all the way to the bottom. But I have to merge this up if I want to see it. And then finally, I will change this text to here. Now we want the text middle to be above everything else. So let's click on the note holding shift and that'll disconnect it, and we can move it off to the side here. Then we can delete this merge node, all right? And it's connected up. So now your composition should look something like this. Then let's take the text middle and drag its output to the output of merge two. And that'll automatically add in a brand new merge node. So now everything should look the same as before, but now the text bottom and text top are below the red box. Now we have to start actually animating the effect. And the animation that I wanna do has the box scaling out and then the text drops down. But that's kinda of hard to do because it's all in the same node. So we need to separate them. And we're gonna be using a really powerful feature called instances. So if I copy this text, so control C, and then paste it by doing control shift V, it'll paste an instance of the node. When instance means everything is connected. So if I change the text in this node, it'll also change in the original and vice versa. But if I view both of these nodes off to the side, again, you'll see they're an exact copy of each other. But a really powerful feature is being able to de-instance parts of the node. So if I head over to the shading tab and on number one, I, 
right click uh, and de-instance the enable checkbox. Now I can uncheck that and as you can see the text will disappear from the instance node. So that's exactly what we want. But now we need to remove the red box from the original node. We need to again go into the instance text, come down to number two, and then de-instance this enable checkbox. And now if we go back to the original node, go to shading, we can uncheck the enable button and it will not affect it in our instance. So now we have two versions of the node, one that only has the text and one that only has the text box. But if I change the text in either of these nodes, it'll update the box and the text at the same time. Now that that's done, we can begin animating. So if I view the media out, I'm gonna add a transform after the instance of the text. Then I'll uncheck size and aspect, so now I can change the X value to make it animate on like so. I'm going to go to frame 25 and add a keyframe on the X size by clicking the little diamond. Now I'll go back to frame zero and drag the X size all the way down to zero. So now if I hit play using spacebar, as you can see, it will expand on over 25 frames. Now, I'll also add a transform after the text middle. And if I go to frame 35, I can add a keyframe on the center Y. Then I'll go to frame 10, and then I'll drag the text up so it is outside of the boundaries of the red box. Now, if I take the output of transform one and put it into the mask input of merge one, that means anything coming into this merge node will only be visible if it is overlapping with the red box. If I play this from the beginning, you can see the text will only be visible when it is inside of the red box, just like so. Now let's animate the text top and the text bottom. So on text top, I'm gonna add in a transform node. I'll go to frame 45 and add a keyframe on the center X and Y. Then I'll go to frame 25 and drag this down so that the your text is pretty much in the same spot as the bottom text. Now what I'll do is I'll copy this transform node and we're gonna use the instance feature once again. So clicking on text underscore bottom, I'll do control shift V and it'll paste an instance of the transform. So now both of these text nodes will animate exactly the same. But inside of the transform node, we can come down to invert transform. I'm gonna right click on that and then do de instance. Now if I check this, the animations will mirror each other. So as you can see, the bottom text is going to go in the opposite direction as the top text. Just like that. Now the only issue is we can still see the top and bottom text at the beginning of the clip and we don't want that. So let's add in a rectangle mask and then we'll go to text bottom, okay? Come over to transform and copy this expression on the rotation. Then I'll come to the angle and the rectangle node, right click, do expression, and I'll paste this expression in here. So that way this rectangle node will always have the same rotation. Now I'll connect this up as a mask input into both of these transform nodes. Then I can change the width of it, make it really long, and also the height, just drag it up. Then I'll grab the center control here and just drag it down so that the mask pretty much cuts the box in half. Now if I view transform three off to the side, what I can do is I can come over to settings and then do multiply by mask. So that means that anything going into this transform node will only be visible in the place the mask selects. So if I view the mask, it's this bottom part of the frame. So as you can see, the text is only visible in the bottom. But since I want the your text to be visible on the top, what I need to do is go over into the transform three and do apply mask inverted. And so now when we play it, as you can see, the text will come up and it won't be visible at the bottom, but it'll be visible at the top. And now because the bottom text starts at the top and moves to the bottom, we need to have that inverted as well. So if we come into the in instance transform over to settings, Let's right click on the apply mask inverted, de-instance it, and then check the box again. So now when we play it, it expands open, text comes out, just like that. Okay, but this animation is not looking that good at all. It is all linear. So let's add some easing to it. So open up the spline editor and then select all the nodes that have keyframes. So transform one, two, and three. And since this is an instance of the transform, we do not need to select it. Now I can hit these three dots and then do select all tools and that'll make them all visible. I can hit Control F on my keyboard and that'll just fit it all into the view. Now I'll select all these keyframes at the top and then I'll hit F on my keyboard. Then I can hit T and now I can adjust the amount of ease in that these have. I'll bring that up to like 87. Then I'll select the bottom keyframes and hit F on my keyboard and I'll just leave that at the default of 33. Now when I go back to the beginning and hit play, as you can see, it has some really nice easing curves to it. So now that we have created the title and that we have added some ease to it, let's make it so that it also animates out at the end. To do this, we're gonna use a simple trick that allows us to reuse the animation no matter how long the actual title is. Let's do shift space and add in a dissolve node. And I'll add this right at the end. And then I will also add in a time speed node and put this at the top, take the output of merge one, put it into here, and then the output of that into the dissolve node. So inside of time speed one, I'm going to give it a speed of negative one. 
So that means if we view it from the perspective of the time speed node, it won't animate on at, th at the beginning, but at the end of the clip, it'll animate off. So now we can put an expression inside the dissolve node to tell it to only show the time speed node at the end of the clip. So inside a background slash foreground, right click, do expression. So let's use a simple expression. So if with two eyes, open parentheses, time is greater than comp dot render end divided by two, then one, otherwise zero, and then closing parentheses. And if you guys just want to copy this, it'll be down in the description below. So what this will do is if the time is less than the render end, which is 119, divided by two, so middle of the clip, it'll show the background input. So that is going to be the original animations. But if it is greater than that, it'll show the time speed version. So it'll show the off animation. So now if we play it from the beginning, we can see it animates on, and then once it gets to the middle, it'll switch and then animate off. So now with that simple expression, this animation is completely retimable. That means I can go to the edit page, drag the end of the fusion composition out, and as you can see, it'll animate out at the end. Now one final thing to add to this is motion blur, and this is why I use transform nodes instead of actually animating the controls inside the node. There's something that not a lot of people know, but if you add a transform node here, and check motion blur, it'll apply motion blur to all of the transform nodes before it. So if I play it, as you can see, it has motion blur. Now the reason doing this is so beneficial is because it really only counts as one node having motion blur, and that's transform number four. It makes your render times so much faster, especially if you have tons of animations. But sadly, it only applies to transform nodes, so if I had animated it in the text, it wouldn't have motion blur. But now let's save this as a preset so we can customize and edit it from the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. So first, I wanna select all of the nodes that I wanna be able to customize. So of course, text top, text bottom, and then text middle. And once I've selected those, I'll just hold down shift and select the rest of the nodes in the composition. Then right click on any of them and do macro and then create macro. Now this pop-up will appear and there's a lot of information coming at you, but I'll only show you the stuff that you need. So first we wanna give it a title. So let's call this modern title animation. Now this is the text top node here. So we can collapse the image thing here and now we can check any of the boxes we want, want to be able to control. So I want to be able to control the text, the font, the style, and all the colors here. And then also the size, tracking, and line spacing. Okay, so I can just select all those controls and then those will be saved so that it's easy to edit. Now I'll do the same thing in the text bottom and text middle. And while I'm working on that, let's talk about the modern title pack from BR Media Pro. I worked with Billy Ripka to create a collection of the best modern titles for DaVinci Resolve. These titles are fully retimable, customizable, and responsive. That means if I change the text, it'll update all the settings in the title, so like sizes, the, even the animations, so that it all looks good. They are really easy to use and allow you to get professional results in seconds. I have used them in the past couple of videos I have done, and it makes my workflow so much easier. So if you want to learn more, check out the link down below. Now let's get back to creating our own. Now, once I'm done with that, I'll just hit close and then I'll say, yes, I do want to save it. Now to navigate to the correct folder, all you have to do is come up here, click Fusion. So go up one directory, then go to Templates, Edit, Titles. And now I can save it right in here. And now we can go over to Titles and hit the search button and then search for Modern Title. And as you can see, our title has appeared. So I can drag this over and now it creates a brand new title. And as you can see, all of the controls that we selected will appear up top and we can customize those for any project. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to give it a like and subscribe down below. Please let me know if you guys have any questions. Make sure to check out that title pack by BR Media Pro. With all that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.